So in our previous introductory video, we did a lot of taxonomy, which was the idea of learning how we name, describe, and classify organisms. We're going to now switch gears and look at the other side of systematics. Systematics consists of taxonomy, which was that naming, describing, and classifying, but it also consists of phylogeny, which is the study of evolutionary history of organisms. And a great tool to study the evolutionary history of organisms lies in something that we call a phylogenetic tree. So we're going to entitle this next flowchart phylogenetic, phylogenetic Tree. And we're going to look at it, the components of a phylogenetic tree and why it's useful to us if we want to study evolutionary history. Keep that in the back of your head. Phylogeny is devoted to studying evolutionary relationships and history amongst organisms. So we'll start off with a bit of background information just to give us a good idea of what phylogenetic trees are all about. In terms of background, we need to understand that a phylogenetic tree represents itself as a branching diagram. You're often going to see it, and I highly, highly suggest looking at your textbook figure of a phylogenetic tree within the chapter on phylogeny. You're going to see a branching diagram, okay, a bunch of branches, that's why we call it a tree, and that branching diagram is going to represent something. That branching diagram represents what we consider the evolutionary history of organisms. So evo history of uh, organisms or even groups of organisms. So it's a powerful tool to look at all that macroevolution, microevolution, Darwinian evolution that we studied and put it on a piece of paper to see how things are related to each other, to see how you have um, descent with modification in a nutshell. So that's our basic idea behind what that tree represents. And the key idea behind this branching is because of the is is in due to the fact that the branching itself gives us as the viewer um, and shows us what we call patterns. It shows patterns. The branches themselves, if you know how to read a phylogenetic tree, show very clear and distinct patterns of descent. And when we see these patterns of descent, we are able to much clearly see the evolutionary history of organisms because we see just how they've descended from each other. But one thing that a phylogenetic tree does not do, and we're going to write not just to extend the knowledge here, shows patterns of descent, but not, not what we call phenotype similarities. Those are different types of trees that we can look at. We're not going to focus on them for right now. Phenotype similarities are simply you're grouping organisms on this, let's say, a diagram, like a branching diagram, based off of how if they look alike. You're utilizing what species concept? You would be utilizing the morphological species concept to group organisms on this uh, on a tree, but we're not doing that on the phylogenetic tree. We're only looking at patterns of descent to represent evolutionary history on a phylogenetic tree. In addition, what we are doing is we're doing a bunch of hypothesizing. And this tree overall hypothesizes evolutionary relationships. It takes a educated and well-understood, well-studied guess as to how things diverge from one another, how different organisms became different organisms, and how species became different species. It's a powerful, powerful tool that represents itself as a series of what we call dichotomies. Dichotomies are just a fancy way of saying splitting events or branching off events. And we're going to get into that more now when we look at the actual components of a phylogenetic tree over here. So we'll entitle this next part of the flowchart components. What does a phylogenetic tree consist of and how do you read one? So phylogenetic trees give us a lot of powerful, powerful information. They basically summarize everything that we've learned in the past three lectures onto one simple tree, one simple diagram. So these components must be quite powerful in um, their own uh, capacities, and we'll explain that. So one of the major components that we have to understand are, are the branch points in trees. This is one of the most important points. Um, and the branch points are also going to be commonly just referred to as the nodes. And I'll try to draw as much as I can in this video, uh, but I highly suggest, again, looking at your textbook figures of a phylogenetic tree and looking for a node after seeing this description. So a node represents a divergence. Okay, It represents a clear-cut divergence, but specifically the divergence of two evolutionary what we call lineages. 
So two things have separated from each other. Two species have separated from each other, um, and they have uh, all originated from a common ancestor. So we have a common ancestor. Let's imagine that we have this as our common ancestor right here, a dot. And then I have a, a species developing. It's going and going. But what's going to happen is I'm going to have a divergence event right now. I'm going to create a node. And this is my node that I just created. Right over here, I created a new species. And I'm going to create another node. Right over there, I created a new species, and they all branch from our common ancestor. So this is this right here, this this dot that I'm making right here. This represents a divergence. This is a node from a common ancestor right here. This is my CA for common ancestor. This is my new species. This is another new species. I can continue branching off over and over and over again, creating a nice fancy tree um, that all represents nodes. So any point at which you have a branching off, like these two points right here, that is a node. Um, so branch points are interesting because you have to understand that the branches themselves are, are movable in a sense. The branches can be rotated, can be rotated around, okay? But you have to make sure that you do this correctly. Branches can be rotated around the branch point, aka the node. The branches can be rotated around the branch point, and this can be done without. You might be saying, oh, well, then you're changing everything. You're changing how it happened. You're actually not without changing the evolutionary relationships. Your textbook does a much better job of possibly showing this than I possibly can with my limitations in terms of uh, drawing. So I highly suggest looking at your textbook figure and seeing how when you switch around some of these branch points, you still maintain the evolutionary relationships without changing evolutionary relationships. Another key component of branch points uh, are something known as sister taxa. So we're going to call them sister taxa. Remember sister chromosomes? Well, we're going to look at a different type of sister. Now we're going to look at sister taxa, and we're going to define it as the following. Right underneath, we're going to write down that sister taxa represent, on the phylogenetic tree, a, uh, groups, uh, a group of organisms, a group of organisms, so O-R-G-S for organisms, that share an immediate common ancestor. That share what we would consider an immediate, that's the key word here, immediate immediate common ancestor. CA stands for common ancestor. Most, uh, More specifically, you can represent sister taxa whenever you see them on a phylogenetic tree as the two closest relatives of each other. So I'll quickly draw some sister taxa for you. So let's imagine I have a common ancestor right over here, and I'm going to create a branching point in which I'm going to have an evolutionary divergence such as this, and then I'm going to continue my divergence this way, and then I'm going to create another divergence here. And I'll create, uh, this is all just random that I'm making right now, I'll create two more right here. What I've done is I've created a separate branching event, and the sister tax are the group of organisms that share an immediate common ancestor. So right now I have this organism 1 and organism 2 right here that share this immediate and uh, really bolded circle right here that, I'm, that my mouse is on, that's a common ancestor. These two individuals right here are the closest relatives on this uh, very, very simple phylogenetic tree. So whenever you see two branch points really close to each other, these are the closest relatives. And at the end of these branch points are always species, okay? So species or, uh, or larger taxon. So that's our sister taxa. We can continue with the components by looking at what we call a rooted tree. A rooted tree can be defined as the following. A rooted tree is in which you have is a tree in which you have one branch point, sort of like we've drawn. I'm pretty sure, from my understanding, these are all rooted trees that we've been drawing. One branch point with most recent common ancestor, with most recent common ancestor um, of all taxa, of all taxa on tree. And remember what taxa means. Taxa is just a, a snippet, a, a portion of the tree, like this portion, or, or this portion, or, or this portion, or this portion. Those are all taxa. And taxa are, again, naming, describing, and classifying. Those are the classifications. These are taxa, taxa, taxa. But when you have one common ancestor that all of these taxa come off of, you have created a rooted tree. And thus you have a very powerful evolutionary relationship. In addition, another component we can understand is something known as the basal taxon. Basal means very basic, very simple, um, very rooted, very uh, rudimentary. Classic example of evolutionary talk that we're doing when we think of a basal taxon. This is uh, going to be a lineage 
that uh, diverges early on. Diverges early. So it's one of the first species that develop, um, and it's usually very close and near to the common ancestor. So again, look at your textbook for a nice picture of basal taxon of all these things uh, encompassed in the figure in your textbook. Uh, another component that we have to understand um, is polytomy. This is actually a bad thing in a phylogenetic tree, something we want to try to avoid because it gets a little confusing for us as the viewer. This is when you have a branch point. This is basically the opposite of a, bit of a rooted tree. When you have a branch point with greater than two descendant groups, with greater than two descendant groups, Sorry for the writing, descendant groups. So branch point with uh, greater than two descendant groups, this is actually going to give us very rather unclear relationships, and I'm sure your textbook has examples of these bad polytomic trees. You do not want this. These are bad. And it's just the component of a bad tree so that you can understand and know when a tree, a phylogenetic tree, does not look good, when something's bad and off about it. And finally, the last component that we're going to talk about, we're going to squeeze it right up here, is um, the idea of an extant species. This is something that I uh, always got confused with because I misinterpreted extant uh, for extinct. It's com the complete opposite, actually. Extant species are those species that are currently living. Extinct or not, extant are. Currently, uh, we'll say currently living species, and they represent themselves at the very tips of the branches. So we'll say at tips of branches. At those branch tips, you have extant currently living species. So one, two, three, four, five, six major components to remember about phylogenetic trees. They're really going to drive home the idea of evolutionary relationships. Notice how all of these things, a lot of them mention common ancestor. A lot of them mention relationship. That's all because we're looking at evolutionary relationships and divergencies, like dichotomies that we already established and mentioned. Overall, we can conclude uh, our uh, study on the phylogenetic tree by stating the following. Uh, a phylogenetic tree is powerful because it shows patterns of descent. If that hasn't been clear so far, please, please look at the actual figure of a phylogenetic tree that I cannot do justice. So these show patterns of descent. Very cool tool to see this, uh, but they are a bit limited, okay? Do not forget this. They do not, do not include some components that you might think a phylogenetic tree will include. Uh, they do not include, or let's say indicate slash indicate a, uh, or indicate when a species, when a species has evolved. They just show relationships, not real time sort of the evolution when a species has evolved, or or they don't quantify how much change has been seen or how much change has occurred in lineage. There are other tools that do this. Change has how much change has occurred in uh, the lineage in question. So L I N E A G E. So they do not include or indicate when a species has evolved or how much change has occurred in the lineage. They show patterns of descent. These are the components and key ideas to understand about phylogenetic trees.